co-hosts, Simone. I just want to kick off a few announcements. Um, this year has been an exciting year for spoken word. Um, Sulu DC, the Asian American Performance Showcase, is rocking and rolling. But I also want to say in March, there is a National Queer Poetry Slam Summit happening March 7, 8, and 9. There are 30 poets from around the country who will be slamming for uh, what's called Capturing Fire, a Queer Spoken Word Summit, March 7, 8, and 9. After that, uh, Split This Rock is a national poetry festival uh, celebrating uh, poetry of uh, provocation and witness. Patricia Smith, Jeffrey McDaniel, um, Chris Abani, uh, Liddell Moyes, Wang Ping. Um, several poets will be here for that week, Wednesday through Saturday. The DC Youth Slam team will be having their finals. So um, it's, it's going to be really, really exciting. So if you want information on any of those events, please see me. Um, tomorrow, there's a benefit for Catching Fire at the Electric Maid in Tacoma. Um, Nancy Eddy, uh, the musician, Natalie E. Illum, storyteller, John Kevin Boggs, and myself will be there uh, tomorrow at 4 o'clock, so check it out. And also, from Philadelphia, Asian Arts Initiative is presenting Home Far and Near. Um, yes. Uh, Catsy of Yellow Rage will be performing in that festival. Uh, Kelly Sai, Robert Carini, Christina Wong, Dan Kong, and Ula Shetty, uh, a terrific ensemble. And Reggie Kabiko. Okay, so without any further ado, are you ready for a show? Yeah. It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, uh, the, uh, the part of the enterprise that is Sulu. Um, she is talented as she is beautiful. When she's not words beating and lifing her cute little butt, uh, she is uh, uh, making links everywhere. And you're going to love her. She's a fabulous poet, dancer extraordinaire. Let's give it up for Simone Jacobson! <laughs> great thing about having Reggie around like as a host you usually don't get like introduction to the host so I get to come up as like an extra celebrity what's up y'all peace welcome to the third edition of Sulu DC I am Simone Jacobson as Reggie mentioned so first of all before we even get started because off the love we don't even know if you haven't been here we don't even know what type of music he's gonna be playing so we're just gonna give him the benefit of the doubt I'm going to introduce you to our DJ. This is DJ Nine Volt, originally hailing from Guam. <laughs> DJ Nine Volt, a.k.a. Tristan Neri, began his career in 2000 as a member of Baseline Productions in Philly. And though still a member of Baseline, he's now in D.C. And he's DJ parties all over the country, including Las Vegas, Los Angeles, New York. New York in the house? Woo! Anybody? Really? That's it? Really? Because okay. we would know, right? Because when New York is in the house, it's like, ah, and the floor is shaking and shit, right? Okay, so New York is not in the house, except for you. Um, San Francisco, D.C., and a founding member of Progressive Beats, a monthly party in the D.C. area to benefit various nonprofits. So give it up for DJ Nine Paul. I'm too short for all that. I'm just going to go ahead and hold that. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much to everybody for coming out. For those of you, this is your first time. Anybody first time at Sulu? Woo! Alright, we hope you come back. Anybody not their first time at Sulu? Woo! Woo! Even What's Sulu? <laughs> Even better, we like that. Alright, so Sulu, D.C. Original started in New York after Hurricane Katrina, Sulu, New York. Uh, named after Sulu of Star Trek. And um, Sulu DC has now been going on since November. We are five co-organizers, Jenny Lattice, uh, Reggie Kabiko, Alexena, and Brian Wang, who is not here. He's traveling in India. We're all very jealous. Um, but I think we're going to have an equally good time tonight. So we're five individuals. We're a grassroots organization. And we're a home for Asian American and Pacific Islanders, spoken word in DC. So give it up one time for yourself. Say what's up to your neighbor. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming out. Wow, y'all really not feeling your neighbors right now. Damn, you should look at the person you came with. Alright, y'all, so let's get it started. Are you ready for some poetry? Yeah! 
Alright, you like poetry more than you like your neighbor. That's good to know. Jenny Lattice, born in the Philippines, raised in Maryland, and now based in DC. Um, she is a poet and host at Busboys and Poets. You can catch her there for Tuesdays. And after graduating from Maryland, she worked at Oberlin College in Ohio, returned to the area, and helped to co-found Sulu DC. She's featured at DC poetry and art venues, including Busboys, Artomatic, and Mother Tongue, previously served on the board of the DC chapter of the National Asian Pacific American Women's Forum. Wow. Napoff, DC. All right, so we really, all of us, anybody work in the nonprofit sector, nonprofit social justice? Education. All right, that's what's up. We gotta work on the acronyms. They're really serious. That's too many letters. Okay. I work for Words Beats and Life. WBL. That's it. Three letters. All right. So think about that when you're creating your names, like the Asian Pacific Islander American Alliance of Awesomeness. It's just like a lot of vowels. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So thank you. Thank you for coming, everybody. One time. First performer, Jenny Ladder. How y'all feeling? Yeah? Is anyone nervous? I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> no, I shouldn't. No. Um, it's so good to see all of you here. Thank you so much for coming, um, for parking in the snow. Hopefully I can get my car out later. Um, but uh, yeah, so before I go um, forward, I really just want to thank and recognize my fellow Sulu DC co-organizers, you know, they are like my foundation um, and they're my second family and uh, I want to thank all the artists who hustle and do their thing and I want to thank all of you who come here and create the space together, you know, because without all of us, this actually wouldn't be what it is, right? So, um, I'm going to start off with a little love. I know it's like late for Valentine's Day. Wait. Do I just sit like this? Yeah. I was gonna start off with my poem. People tell me I have a tall aura, cause it usually works out. Cause I always have to adjust the microphone, but maybe I'll do it later. <clears throat> okay, love, right? Love. Okay. Um, I wanted to share this piece cause a lot of my friends, this is actually the first time they're gonna see me perform, um, and I know that this is one of their favorite poems of mine. So this goes out to them. It is called Love and Politics. We lie in bed together, legs tangled, breathing synchronized as a fireworks display of misdirected patriotism captures America's imaginations and suspends common sense. While bombs cascade across the midnight sky like falling stars illuminating darker nations. On the other side of the globe, our relatives pray for the next people power revolution, waiting for a new president, for a new day. In the morning, we'll struggle in 501c3 communities bear our souls to funders, and drink liquor with whoever's down with the movement, drowning qualms and gin and tonics and Sam Adams beer. In the morning, we'll wrestle with our privilege, question our intentions, and admit some defeat. But tonight, we're enveloped in the righteous ideals of college days organizing, fueled by the young interpretations of the contributions of Gabriella sisters and Bonifacio brothers, characterized by protests and conferences and the fight for Asian American studies. Yeah, Asian American Studies! That wasn't part of the poem. Um, tonight we fall into each other like students first discovering the injustices of the world and hastily creating ways to change it. Staying up all night making posters for rallies, talking it up, talking it up about the fucked up policies of the current administration, the difference between rap and hip hop and featured articles in Color Lines magazine. Tonight we take turns on top, your hands cradling the arch of my back, me relinquishing the guards and letting you hold me. Protect me. We make up for yet another dinner date turned meeting where we exchange tasks and not touches across the table. Tonight, I forgive your inaction when you fail to call out a friend who cracked a joke about all the vaginas he's tasted. Tonight, like some other nights, I make excuses, rationalize in my head that decolonizing minds is a lifelong process and that you're trying your best. I know you don't want to say it, but you think my expectations are too high sometimes. I count more red flags than green. 
I have a tendency to take control. I equate vulnerability with loss of power, and I don't quite trust you. But the world extends beyond this bedroom despite our efforts to separate it. And the dim lights confuse distinctions between who we are and who we choose to show. But I'm working through all of this with you as we lie here in bed, legs tangled, breathing synchronized, waiting for morning. <laughs>